creating a yes or no field, a check mark or an X mark using a combo box. In this example, I have a list of patient names and their phone numbers in columns I and J. We need to call these patients to inform them about their lab results. I want to be able to select a yes or no from a drop list and get a check mark for the contacted patients. To help me visualize the contacted patients, I also want the entire record to be highlighted. So, in this project, we learn how to add the developer tab to the ribbon. Then, we'll be creating a combo box for each record that shows a yes or no. We'll then link the combo box to a cell. Then, we'll create a nested function using if and character functions using ASCII codes. We'll then change the result of the function to a check mark or an X mark. And finally, we'll apply three conditional formatting rules. Let's build our project from ground up in Excel. So this is my finished project. I have a list of patient names, and I would like to call these patients to inform them about their lab results. When I call a patient, I select from a drop list. I select a yes, and the moment I select a yes, the entire record is highlighted, and a check mark appears in column N. When I look at the X mark, I know that I still need to follow up with this patient. Let's see how we create this project from scratch. So this is my start file. It shows only the list of patient names and their phone numbers. And you might have noticed that I'm adding a helper column. This helper column will be hidden when I finish my project. So the first thing I need to do is to create the combo boxes. This drop list is a combo box. And to create the combo box, I need to add the developer tab to the ribbon. To add the developer tab, I can do that in so many ways. Let me show you one of the techniques. I click on the file tab of the ribbon, click on options, and from the Excel options dialog box, I'll be selecting customize the ribbon. On the right side, I'll check the box for developer tab, and that should add the developer tab to the ribbon. Here is my developer tab. On the developer tab, I have a group named controls, and to select a combo box, I click on the down arrow and select the second option, combo box. When I move my mouse pointer over the cell, the mouse pointer looks like a crosshair, so I click and drag to create my first combo box. And now I would like to pick up the input values for this combo box, so I'll be preparing for that, and let's say in cell N1, I'll be typing my first option, a yes, and in cell N2, I'll be typing my second option, which is a no. Now let's connect the combo box to these two cells. To do that, I press Ctrl and click on my combo box to select it. And then click on Properties on the Developer tab. And the Properties or the Format Control dialog box opens. It asks me about the input range. And the input range consists of the two values I provided. I could have added more. And then I want to link it to a cell and this cell will be the corresponding cell in the same row, but from the helper column that will be later on hidden. And then I hit OK. I need to repeat the same exact step for each one of these records. So instead of starting from scratch, I can press Ctrl and drag to create a copy of the combo box. Although I created a copy, but I definitely need to change the property of this second version of the combo box to link it to a different cell. But before I do that, I'm going to create more copies. I press Ctrl to select the two combo boxes and then press Ctrl and Shift to drag. The Shift key ensures that they are perfectly aligned. And then I press Ctrl to select the four boxes and then click and drag one more time while pressing Ctrl and Shift to create more combo boxes. And I need one more, so I press Ctrl and then release Control and Shift and create my last combo box. Now I need to go through each one of the combo boxes and link it to a different cell. I start with the second one, the first one is fine, so I click on Properties and this one should be linked to the next cell and then I hit OK. 
I'll be repeating this for each one of the combo boxes. I finished creating my combo boxes and copying them and linking each one of the combo boxes to the corresponding cell in the helper column that will be later on hidden. Now what I would like to do is to adjust the vertical alignment and the vertical spacing so I could select each one of the combo boxes while pressing the control key on my keyboard and then I'll go to the format tab of the ribbon and to the right side of the format tab I have an align command so when I click on the format tab and click on the down arrow for align I could align center and then I could click one more time and select distribute vertically so I have the combo boxes perfectly aligned and equidistant. My next step is to select a value and because the combo box is linked to a cell in column C so if I select a value and I say yes it delivers a 1 and because I have two options what if I select no it delivers a 2 so I'll be selecting some yeses and some noes and then after selecting the yeses and noes what I would like to do is to deliver in column D a check mark if I have a 1 in column C which simply means we contacted that patient and to do that I need to create an if function so I'm selecting all the cells in column D and I'll type equal if and then I hit tab if the value in column C3 is equal to 1 then what would you like to do? I need to use the ASCII characters. So what are the ASCII characters? What are the ASCII codes? And how to use them to deliver a yes or no in Excel? ASCII is the acronym for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It's a code for representing the 128 English characters as numbers. Each letter is assigned a number from zero to 127. For example, the ASCII code for uppercase M is 77. ASCII codes from 65 to 90 corresponds to letters A to Z in uppercase. ASCII codes from 97 to 122 corresponds to letters A to Z in lowercase. In Excel, the character function converts the ASCII numbers to characters. Example, if I type equal character 65, it returns capital A. We can change the appearance of these letters by changing the font type. To deliver a check mark, we use equal character 252. To deliver an X mark, we use equal character 251. Now, let's do it in Excel. So I typed equal if C3 is equal to 1. In this case, I need to deliver a check mark, which is character 252. Otherwise, I need to deliver an X mark, which is character 251. I close the bracket for the second character function. I close the bracket for the if function. And to populate my function, I hit Control Enter. What are these characters? They don't look like a check mark or an X mark. Yeah, you can change the appearance of these characters because these are linked to fonts. So if you change the font type and select a special font type called Wingding, I'm going to scroll down to letter W and the moment I select Wingdings, it converts the delivered characters from the if function to a check mark and an X mark. My last step will be creating conditional formatting rules. So I'll be creating a conditional formatting rule to convert the check mark to green and another conditional formatting rule to convert the X mark to red. And then I'll be creating a third conditional formatting rule to highlight the entire record. And finally, I'll be hiding column C, the helper column. Let's start by creating the first conditional formatting rule. I click on conditional format and then select a new rule. I need to create a new rule using a formula. So I select use formula. And in this cell, I say if C3 and this one should be unlocked to populate the conditional formatting rule, if it is equal to 1, 
I would like to apply this format, so I click on Format, and then say I want it to be bold, and I want it to be green, and then hit OK twice, and I would have applied my first conditional formatting rule. Let's create a second one in the same exact way. On the Home tab, I click on Conditional Format, New Rule, and then use a formula, and then in this formula, I'll say if C3, and I change it to a relative cell reference by hitting the F4 key three times, if it is equal to 2. In this case, it will be delivering an X mark, so I want to format this X mark in bold, and I want it to be red, and then I hit OK twice, and I would have formatted all the X marks as well. My next step will be applying a conditional formatting rule to highlight the entire record, so I select the patient name and the phone number and say I want to apply a conditional formatting rule using a formula, so click on your rule, use a formula, and from the perspective of this active cell, which is the name of the first patient, I would like to say if cell C3, and this one should be locked to the column only, so I hit the F4 key twice, so I have a dollar sign in front of the column letter, so when the rule is populated in the entire range, it always look in column C at the same row. If it is equal to 1, in this case I would like to highlight the entire column, so I click on Format, and then on the Fill tab of the Format cell dialog box, I need to select a matching color, so let's say I click on uh, this light uh, red color, and then hit OK twice. And now all the patients who have been contacted, those who show a check mark, are highlighted. So if I change from a yes to a no, just to check the functionality, everything is working fine. Do I still need the helper column? Not anymore. So I select column C, and I need to hide it by right-clicking and select Hide. And now I, this is my finished project. Let's test the functionality one more time. I'll change this one to no and it changes to a check mark and the conditional formatting is gone. Let's test another one. I click on the down arrow, select a yes, the entire record is highlighted and I see a check mark. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in our next training video.